All right, today we are going to look at water potential. Now, water potential is pretty important because it is related to osmosis and diffusion. And is very important as far as grid in questions go because on the test they're very keen on asking water potential type questions in the grid in section where you have to bubble in a mathematical answer. So water potential is going to have an equation that goes with it. And you know, let's just so I can open this. It's on your sheet, your uh, formula sheet on the back. And it's this box right here, all on water potential. So when I'm writing equations, you can, um, in this video, you can find all of them right here, reference figures. You don't have to memorize them. And why water potential is important is it is quantitative. mathematical model for osmosis. So at this point, after the readings in the last video in our lab, everyone should have a good conceptual understanding about osmosis diffusion and tonicity. For example, if I say that this solution is a two molar salt solution. I put in a cell that is a one molar salt concentration on the inside of the cell. You should at this point be able to say that this solution is hypertonic relative to the cell. It's more concentrated. And because of that, water will move out of the cell, past the membrane, into the beaker. That is, if this membrane is um, permeable to, to water, but not salt. So, you can identify where diffusion will go from inside the cell to outside. The cell will shrink because it's been placed in a hypertonic solution. So this is a good conceptual understanding. What we want to develop is a quantitative or a mathematical understanding to state to what extent in, will water diffuse in what direction. All right. So our goal for all of our water potential problems is to state what direction and at what relative rate will water move by osmosis. So that is what we want to figure out in doing all of our water potential problems. So let's start with an example. So the equation for water potential looks like this. We've got these funny shapes and these letter W, P, S subscripts. So the W, oops, let's see. The W stands for water potential. What water potential is, is in what direction will water flow? How, what potential does my solution have to gain water by osmosis or to lose water by osmosis? Potential to gain or lose 
water by osmosis. We have this weird sign of P that's pressure potential. And that is, in what direction is pressure acting on the system? What pressure is acting on the system? For example, up here in my beaker of water, if I applied pressure to this beaker, it would be pushing water in towards the cell. And last, we have the weird sign in S, so the solute potential. And that basically saying is, where is our concentration gradient? Where is our concentration of solute gradient. All right, so here's an example. Same beaker. Two molar NaCl solution. Two molar NaCl solution. It's going to have a certain water potential or um, relative potential to gain or to lose water by osmosis. That is equal to the pressure that's being put on the system and the concentration of that solution. So let's actually try out the whole thing. Let's try out calculating the whole thing. All right. start with a beaker of salt water or a beaker of water this will just be a beaker of water we want to figure out its water potential so what is its pressure potential well the only pressure that's acting on it is the atmosphere. So 14 pounds of square inch pushing down on this water. In all of these problems, we're going to negate atmospheric pressure. So any open beaker just open to the atmosphere is going to have a zero pressure potential. So we can say that the pressure potential is zero. So in this example, for any problem you're given, if it's just open to the atmosphere, there will be no pressure potential. Your water potential will just depend on your solute potential. So what is our solute potential for this system? Well, distilled water has no solute dissolved in it, so our solute potential will be zero. As you add solute to a liquid, as you add solute to a liquid, the solute potential will become more negative. So if I add solute to this water, solute potential will become more negative, less than zero, and my water potential will become less than zero. But right now, for distilled water in an open beaker, our water potential is zero. As your water potential becomes more negative, it means water will be more likely to move into that area. So water will always move from 
um, area of high water potential to area of low water potential. So it will move from a less negative water potential to a more negative water potential. So how would that look in a solution that doesn't have a zero water potential? All right, another open beaker. Now we're going to have our two molar NaCl solution. And our water potential is the pressure potential plus the solid potential. Again, just open to the atmosphere, so our pressure potential is going to be zero. This time, though, we have two moles of salt dissolved in here. So our solid potential is going to be negative. It's going to be not going to be zero. But what is it going to be? Well, to figure out solute potential, another little equation that's on our sheet. Solute potential equals the negative of ICRT. And what does that mean? C is just the concentration. So in this example, two moles R equals the pressure constant. So just like the R in chemistry, and it gives you this R in the, your cheat sheet as well on the back, it's just going to be equal to 0 0.0831. It's a constant. It won't change at all. And T is equal to our temp in Kelvin. Or to your temperature in degrees Kelvin. So, for example, zero degrees C equals 273.15 degrees K. And last, I equals the dissociation constant. Now, what is the dissociation constant? That's just how many parts will our solute break into when dissolved. How many parts will our salt break into when they're dissolved? So, for example, if we dissolve salt in water, it will break into a sodium ion and a chlorine ion. So our I will equal 2. All right? Glucose doesn't break into any parts, so I would be 1. Um, calcium chloride would have two negative chlorine ions and one positive calcium ion, so its I would be three. So if I go through and find my solid potential, I would have my negative I two C Two moles are zero point zero eight three one and T will say that the temperature is twenty five degrees Celsius, so two seventy three plus twenty five would be two hundred and ninety eight degrees Kelvin. I put through that in my equation. and get out negative 90.7. So that would be our, our solid potential, 90.7. And our water potential, 0 plus negative 90.7, is negative 90.7.
So we could say the water potential for this solution is negative 90.7. Now we need to put a cell inside of that beaker. So get some more space, redraw the beaker. Salt solution, two molar. The water potential is equal negative 90.7 for the beaker. Now we're going to put a cell in here that's one molar in ACL. So our cell, same thing as before. No pressure potential to start out with, just sitting there under atmospheric pressure. Our solid potential is going to equal negative I C R T. And if we look back before, we already pretty much figured it out. Because the salt concentration is going to be the same, or sorry, the association constant is the same, the R is the same, the T is the same. It's just the concentration that's going to be different. And it's only going to be half. It's going to be one instead of two, one molar instead of two molar. So our solute potential is only going to be half of what it was for the beaker. So our solute potential going to equal negative 45.35, half of 90.7. So for our cell, the water potential equals 0 plus negative 45.35 is going to equal negative 45.35. Now what does that mean? That means that water is going to go from the inside of the cell, the area of less negative water potential, to the beaker, the area of more negative water potential. And it's going to continue to do that. It's going to continue to leave the cell until these water potentials are equal. Well, how do they become equal? Well, let's think about it. As water leaves the cell, No solute can leave. So as water leaves, the concentration in this cell becomes greater. And this solute potential will become more negative. At the same time as water enters the beaker, it's going to start diluting the salt concentration. Or our concentration is going to be less. Our solute potential will start to fall. It will become less negative. So at some point, as the concentration in the cell is de increasing by losing water, and the concentration in the beaker decreases as it gains water, these two numbers, the solid potentials, will become the same number. And once the water potential is the same, net diffusion or osmosis will stop. Net diffusion or osmosis will stop. When at all does pressure potential come? Well, let's say we'll flip the molarities. We'll say that the cell is 2 molar and the outside is 1 molar. Let's flip. All right, so instead of the cell now, this is going to be the beaker. Instead of the beaker, this is the cell. So if the cell is 2 molar, it has a water potential of negative 90.7, and the beaker has a water potential of 45.35. Water is going to start going into the cell. It's going to start decreasing its solid potential and the water potential of um, the beaker will become more negative. Well, once water is becoming coming into the cell, it starts to expand the cell and the cell plasma membrane starts to stretch. That stretching like an elastic band applies a pressure back into the cell, pushing water out of it, resisting the expansion. And that's going to increase the pressure potential.
and the more water comes in the higher the pressure potential will get in animal cells the cell membrane is so weak that if you have a great difference like this in solute potential the pressure will never build up to be high enough before the cell plasma membrane fails and it just lyses it explodes in plant cells, the rigid cell wall allows for this pressure potential to get a lot higher before the cell explodes. So diffusion can actually be resisted by the pressure potential in plant cells. That's why diffusion will stop when water potential equals out, not when necessarily solute potential or concentration is equal, when water potential is. So now I want to take some opportunity to do a few sample questions like are on your sheet. So number one, it says the value of water potential in root tissue was found to be negative three three negative three point three bars. If you take the root tissue and place it in a one molar solution of sucrose at twenty degrees Celsius in an open beaker, what is the water potential of the solution and in which direction would the flow of water be? Alright. So let's do root tissue sucrose solution. So our root tissue, we already know water potential is negative 3.3. And bars is just a way to measure pressure. In the sucrose solution, we know that first, pressure potential plus solid potential. You take the root tissue, place a one molar solution of sucrose at 20, in an open beaker, so our pressure potential is going to be zero. So we need to figure out our solute potential. Negative I C R T. Okay. Negative I sucrose doesn't dissociate. So our I is going to be one. C point one molar. R. 0.0831. What's our T? Well, 0 degree centigrade is 273. 293. Let's plug that into our calculator. Oops. Wrong window. So, negative 1 times point one times zero point zero eight three one times two hundred ninety three negative two point four three so our solid potential negative two point So we put that in our equation, we get our water potential is equal to 0 plus negative 2.43, water potential equals negative 2.43 bar. So water is going to go from the less negative to the more negative, it's going to go into the root tissue, so water will go into the root tissue. And that's all there is to it. Let's try, try a few more. Um, all right. If a cell's, let's draw this out first. 
for those cells, pressure potential is 3 bars, so 3 bar, and its solid potential is negative 4.5 bar. What is the resulting water potential? So just adding these together, 4 plus negative 4.53, water potential negative 1.5. The cell from question one is placed in a beaker of sugar water with a solid potential of negative four bars. In which direction will the net flow be? All right, so the cell, water potential, negative 1.5 bar. The beaker, Solid potential, negative 4.0 bar. It's in a beaker, an open beaker, so pressure potential is going to be zero. That means our water potential is negative 4 bar. Water is going to travel from the least negative to the most negative, so the water will travel into the beaker from the cell. Oops. The original cell from question number one is placed in a beaker of sugar water with a negative 0.15 megapascals, we know that one megapascal is one bar. In which direction will the flow of water be? This is just conversions. Pure and simple. No, no, nothing extra about it. So the cell, water potential is still negative 1.5 bar. The beaker. Got our water potential equals pressure potential, which is going to go to zero plus our solid potential, negative 0 0.15 megapascals. We've got 1 megapascal equals 10 bars. So all we need to do is multiply this by 10. So we're going to get negative 1.5 bar. And that will be our water potential. Well, our beaker water potential negative 1.5 bar, so negative 1.5 bar, bar. In which direction will the net flow of water be? They're the same. The water potential is the same. No net flow of water. No net flow of water. Right, let's look at a few more then. Let's look at these two to fi finish it out. A cell contains okay. A cell containing glucose is in equilibrium with its surrounding solution containing 0.5 molar glucose in open open container. What is the cell's pressure potential? All right. So the cell. Let's see. We are trying to find the pressure potential. So, the hint. You're going to need to calculate S first. And then, you know, for the open beaker, the pressure potential is zero. You'll need to calculate the beakers solid potential. And you know if there is an equilibrium, there's no net flow.
so what you were going to find is that you the pressure potential is going to equal the difference between these two water potentials. All right. Try that one, and that should help you with the assignment. Let me know if you have any questions, but we're going to go through how to do more of these on Tuesday. You need to work through that sheet.